Alex Kovacev. That's interesting. Welcome to the Lehigh League of Lehigh County. This is our first time doing an online broadcast, but uh, we've noticed that a lot of people like to turn to online forums for breastfeed and help, so we're trying to get with the trends and hopefully reach more people via the internet. I'm Jennifer. I'm one of the Lehigh League leaders. I'm Samina. I'm one of the other leaders. Alyssa, I'm another leader of La Leche League of Lehigh County. We have five leaders all together, and there are three more leaders in La Leche League of Bethlehem. Yep. So, should we just going to give La Leche Yeah, exactly. So, um, we host two meetings a month, uh, the first Friday of every month and the second Wednesday of every month. This is our second meeting this month. Um, we usually have a topic that we discuss for the first uh, like half hour of the meeting, and then afterwards it's open to the group to ask questions, um, or if they have any questions related to breastfeeding, we ask that everyone have their questions answered before they leave. Um, so that we can make sure everyone gets the help that they need. Meetings are always free to attend. We don't charge a fee. Um, we do have memberships available, and the money goes towards our group to help with group dues and to help leaders with continuing education and to support our group and things like that. But it's not required to have a membership. Um, and if you do come to actual meetings, you know, you can bring children. Children are welcome. Babies are welcome. And do whatever you need to do to take care of your children. Um, we are also available, we are each available by phone, some of us are available by text and email. We have a Facebook group and we also have a blog. Yes, which I have to update. <laughs> um, our meeting for, our topic meeting for tonight was actually Building a Village, a village um, which I'm actually really excited about because it's a great precursor to next month for our Live Love Lash event, right. which is in the middle, is actually in the beginning, the first weekend of breastfeeding month. Um, so that's an awesome like precursor to that because I feel like I feel like I've talked to a lot of friends about this with like this whole village yeah. mentality right. and how it's like just completely like non existent yes. in our society yes. anymore. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the mother to mother support unfortunately is not there the way that yeah. it used to be, which mm -hmm. was quite the which is a shame yeah. right now, but yeah. we need to reenact it. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's nice about group meetings like this because I have actually talked to friends who don't have kids and have never breastfed, and they're like, I don't understand why there are breastfeeding support groups. Like, why is why is that necessary? And I'm like, because decades ago, generations ago, everyone breastfed. It was like right. a, a non-issue. Right. Everyone knew how to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. if, somebody, if a mother had a problem, they went to their mother, sister, mm -hmm. or grandparents, yeah. and they asked questions, and they helped them. But now I've talked to women who have decades, generations of their family who have never breastfed. Right. That's right. They have no one in their life who's ever breastfed. Well, and that's why the well, Lecce League was founded to begin exactly. with. Yeah, exactly. was because there were seven women who met at a church picnic and yeah. said, we want more help with breastfeeding. Yeah. Right. And they decided to help each other out. Mm -hmm. No, it makes it's, it makes a huge difference. Having just been to Turkey, where um, in a, we stayed in a village where I, we were able, I was able to see a lot of moms who had that village kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's something that we definitely lack. I mean, they have generations mm -hmm. who will help each other, and you know, there's a, and actually they would even go as far as if, if one mother for some reason wasn't around, another mother would be able to breastfeed her children. That's awesome. Not that that's something that a lot yeah. of people here would necessarily do, but it's right. nice that that was available. Yes. That, that mm -hmm. is available there, mm -hmm. right. so the children never go hungry. Uh. Always, you know, and you you know one mother. Like the kids are basically like sibling, even if they're cousins, because right. they're always at each other's homes. They're in that little village, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's really quite wonderful. And you know, through La Leche League, the nice thing is that we can kind of start that village idea up again, yes. which is very nice. Yes. Well, I know what brought me to La Leche League at first, with about four year, almost four years ago, um, after my first, was I went back to work and I missed having social contact <laughs> right. with people. You know, all I did was wake up really early, feed the baby, get it ready, drop him off at daycare, go to work, mm -hmm. and then pick him up from daycare, go home, feed the baby some more, and go to bed. And, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. Yeah. Um, and I just lost that connection with mm -hmm. anyone that I used to get together with. Mm -hmm. You know, I still saw them at work at times where I would have phone calls, but there was no face-to-face -face interaction mm -hmm. right and well I was fortunate my mother breastfed me and my sister and I had friends who breastfed 
I couldn't, I didn't feel comfortable constantly calling them because mm -hmm. they had lives of their own and they aren't local. Yeah. So that made it tougher to get that support in mm -hmm. person. Yep. That's understandable. And I don't see anyone who's logged in yet, but if you're able to watch this video afterwards, we're hoping that it'll save to YouTube. Um, if you do log in, you can actually ask questions while we're live streaming. Um, so if we mention something that you'd like to comment on or a question that you have that's pertinent to the information we're talking about, you can actually just, um, I think there's a should be an option on the sidebar here um, that you can ask a question and we can either type back an answer if we're in the middle of a group discussion or we can answer it afterwards. So that option is available so that you can actually interact with our meeting here. And some questions that I've fielded recently in calls mm -hmm. include where can I get support? Mm -hmm. And there are so many different groups and mm -hmm. so lactation supporters in Lehigh Valley right mm -hmm. now. Um, there are there's a group that meets almost every day of the week. Really? Yeah. I don't know about that. There's Monday morning moms at Lehigh okay. Valley Hospital. Sure. There's uh, milk and coffee, which is done through the Lehigh Valley Breastfeeding Center. Mm -hmm. um, although they meet at a church in Warfield mm -hmm. um, to get up that way. Okay. Um, there's you know, we meet one Wednesday a month. Um, we meet one Friday a month. There's a uh, Thursday evening moms, which is a postpartum emotional support group. Okay. Which, so it's not specifically breastfeeding, mm -hmm. but the person who runs it is a former labor and delivery nurse okay. who has breastfeeding experience, and she is she doesn't she is happy to help, and mm -hmm. if she doesn't have the information, she works with other people who are IBCLCs. That's great. Um, and breastfeeding educators. Um, so if she doesn't have the answer, she knows how to get the answer. Great, great. Um, so there's that, the other La Leche League group in Bethlehem meets and they're on the Tuesday a month. From right? us. I think it's the third Tuesday of the month. They're the third Tuesday yeah. of the month, in the evening. Um, and that's the thing, there are evening groups, it's not just daytime mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. So even moms who are working during the day can come get support. Yep. Plus there are so many helplines I was going through and there's, I think, there's the eight leaders plus there are, each of the hospital networks has a helpline. Mm -hmm. And several of the pediatrician's offices have oh, their yeah. own either CLCs or IVCLCs or breastfeeding educators oh, nice. who answer questions. Nice. Um, plus, if you participate in WIC, mm -hmm. they have help right. lines. Yeah. So there's really it's a lot of resources. There's out there. so many resources. There's no reason not to get the help that you need. Exactly. Exactly. And that's just the free help that you yeah. can get. <laughs> there's it's also paid help. help. That's right. And the nice thing about La Leche League is that because our phone numbers are right on the website, mm -hmm. that if you have an issue at seven at night, you can still right. call. It's yeah. not like it's an 8 to 4.30 thing. Exactly. So that's a really wonderful yeah. exactly. resource to have. If you're in the hospital, you've just had your baby, there's five of our numbers there, and then, like you said, Bethlehem group, so that's right. somebody is going to be around. That's right. Exactly. So, exactly. That's right. And the fact that we have our email addresses. Right, now, exactly, which is another us, thing that helps Yeah, I am emails at you know, 1 in the morning sometimes. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm up fe feeding a baby. I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll answer an email. <laughs> Makes it so much easier. <laughs> So we introduce the event for next month? Sure, we can talk about the event. Um, I happen to bring a flyer so we can hold it up. And that's going to be backwards. OK. <laughs> um, so it's the Lehigh Valley Live, Love, Latch, Big Latch on Family Celebration, Saturday, August 6th from 10 AM to 2 PM at Bucky Boyle Park in Allentown. You do not need to be currently breastfeeding to mm -hmm. take part. We welcome all families. Um, although we are focusing on celebrating breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, Live Love Latch is the La Leche League of USA yes. um, event celebrating breastfeeding um, and supporting breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, but Big Latch On is a global event that mm -hmm. is taking place in countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. They've had thousands of participants mm -hmm. um, each year. I think last year there were over 13,000 participants. Wow. Uh, worldwide, and there were, I mean, I know we had about a hundred people come mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to our Allentown location last yeah. year. Um, now, not all of them were breastfeeding mm -hmm. at the time, but we had, I believe, over 50 latches. Oh, wow. Um, so for one minute, 50 different 
babies yeah. were latched on to their right. mothers. <laughs> um, and they do allow, the rules do allow exclusively pumping moms mm -hmm. to count a pump as a latch, which is nice because there are moms out there yeah. who, for whatever reason, medical mm -hmm. reasons, or because they're away from their babies for extended mm -hmm. periods of time, have to do that mm -hmm. um, exclusive pumping. Um, so that is part of it. The big latch on itself takes place at 10.30 in the morning. Um, but then we also have, as I said, the event goes from 10 until 2. What are we doing with the rest of the time? Well, we have some great events lined up, some great activities. There are some presenters coming. Um, a local child care agency is, that provides in-home child care is going to be coming to talk about finding quality child care and the difference oh, between nice. a child care provider and a babysitter. Okay. Um, we have a baby wearing instructor who's going to be coming and doing some demos and instruction. Um, we are working on getting Yay! some uh, physical fitness activities, um, both from the local WIC and Casa Guadalupe, um, and also from a local uh, gym that caters specifically to women um, with children. Oh, nice. You know, and they ha they're they're hoping to bring a group. You know, they're just waiting for our go ahead <laughs> with our permit um, from the city, but they are planning on bringing a family fitness class as well as a fitness for moms who are new moms and want to get back into whatever shape they want nice. um, and also um, something that they can do with their child with their young children okay. um, so not just the older children but also the young children so like a mother baby exercise stretching yoga type thing nice. um, so they're very excited about that um, we have some great local donors uh, for prizes. There are free prizes that will be given away. We also have, we've been working on getting corporate donors. Yes. Um, so we've got, do you want to talk about some of those? Well, I already <laughs> got donations from Milk Nurse and Wear. Um, they sent me a nursing top. It's like a scoop neck top, and it has the part that flips up, so you can breastfeed that way. Um, and they also sent me coupons. And I also got donations from Diva Cup. Uh, they sent me two models along with a wash for each and then um, also coupons for them. I also got donations from Earth Mama Angel Baby already. Um, sample packs that are going to be in the swag bags that we're going to give out at the event to all the participants. And then I also got a donation from, who was the other one? Uh, let's see, there was Chipotle. Oh yes, Chipotle donated two, dinner for two, so it's a $50 value mm -hmm. for, there's two of them, a uh, $50 value for dinner for two people. Um, that one just came in the other day, so I should be getting those in the mail any day, actually. Yeah, I know we have some teas coming in from yes. different companies, lactation teas. Um, we're working on some other great prizes, including I talked to some places <laughs> that are very excited to send us uh, gift baskets. Oh, nice. Um, so we'll have some gift baskets. We'll be announcing those within the next week or so. Nice. Um, and we have some local donors that are donating things like gift certificates for child care, gift certificates for massages, um, and there are other things. Um, there's a, ba a gift basket coming from a mom who creates who creates her own cloth napkins. Um, so we've got um, local honey bees. Um, so we've, we've got a whole bunch of different baskets. A local herbalist is donating a gift certificate. Nice. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of different, both local and mm -hmm. corporate sponsors mm -hmm. who are donating um, and want to support this event and want mm -hmm. to support breastfeeding in Lehigh Valley and around the Pennsylvania, the yes. U.S. and the world. Yes. Um, so I'm very excited about this. Yes. I also heard that stuff. we are going to be having <laughs> some local representatives, oh, okay. local representatives come. I am waiting for details and confirmation on that, but nice. we have invited several local politicians and some local senators and other House of Representatives members. Of course. That would be great to get them on board. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which has, yes. I have my thing with paid parental leave, but it impacts breastfeeding. Well, it so does. Maybe we can it completely does. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we also have the Pink Heels Pink Fire Truck coming. Yes. I'm so excited <laughs> for that. I'm <laughs> ready to sign the trucks. <laughs> and we are waiting to hear back from some local mascots. Nice. Nice. Um, 
Yes, and of course the fruit and veggies on the move truck. That's oh yeah, be there. yeah, they were there so, last year too. Offering the, free refreshments. Free That's from Allentown Health Bureau. Okay, nice. So we've got some really great stuff, and it seems like every week we have more and more uh, businesses mm -hmm. and local entities that sign on, and as I said, national and international yeah. entities mm -hmm. that sign on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. It's gonna be a great event. Yeah. yeah. Really wonderful. So. yeah. I'm going to leave the flyers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> from Harrisburg to just Ladington. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm going to have my hand out room today. <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere I go, I'm going to have to keep this Flyers. <laughs> so, are there any other questions that you've handled lately? Because I know I have a list. Do you? Ones. Yes. Let's. Shoot, let's go. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I get the same topics. That's why I feel like I need to do a blog post of like okay. the same one, questions. Right. Yes. Because yes. I feel like it's the same topics over and over again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you know, it's it's good to get mm -hmm. the information out. There. It, is. Um, it is. I recently helped out a mom who was concerned about storing breast milk, pumped breast milk. How long can she store it? Mm -hmm. And what does she do while she's traveling on vacation? Oh, so true. because she was trying to think of, you know, it's not just the normal storage question. She's traveling, so yeah, how sure. does she keep it cool enough exactly. so that it doesn't go bad? Um, and one of the things that I suggested to her was if she was planning on using breast milk beef on the trip, that she freeze it ahead of time, and then it would be cold, and she could keep it cold, so that she right. could then use it, and it would probably fall, but mm -hmm. then she could use it when it gets to its destination. Exactly. Um, now, the catch is that you have once it's frozen and then thawed, you have to use it within 24 hours, mm -hmm. but if she's planning on using it that first day that they get there, mm -hmm. until she has time to set up and pump and everything, yeah. That would be one way to get around it. Yeah. Um, she also had a question about: Can she have a glass of wine? Mm -hmm. And the she she had been told you have to pump and dump. You can't breastfeed uh -huh. at all. No. And the current research mm -hmm. indicates that no, you don't mm -hmm. need to pump and dump as mm -hmm. long as baby is full term and healthy. Mm -hmm. Mom is a moderate to light drinker. Mm -hmm. Um, there is no indication that the alcohol level in mom's breast milk would be high enough to impair mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. The concern would be that mom might be too impaired mm -hmm. to care for baby, mm -hmm. right. but as long as mom is behaving responsibly, yeah. there's no reason she can't have a glass of wine mm -hmm. or something. you know. Of course, with moderation. And all the research I so, read, if you are like a light drinker, right? There's the amount that passes through to the breast milk is not nearly as much as what you're taking in. Correct. It's right. A much smaller amount. Correct. So if you're only having one or two glasses of wine, the amount right. that's passing through is not enough to even right. Right. do anything. And right. the other reason, the other thing is pumping and dumping mm -hmm. is really sort of pointless mm -hmm. because as your body processes the alcohol. Mm -hmm. The alcohol It'll is also processed out of the breast, out milk. Of the breast right, milk. So exactly. as it's out of your blood, it's mm -hmm. also out of your breast milk. Exactly. So it doesn't sit in there. It doesn't stay there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, one glass of wine, drinking in moderation mm -hmm. is as long as everybody is healthy and mm -hmm. responsible, mm -hmm. um, it, there does not appear to be any danger to mm -hmm. that. Now. There is a myth that drinking certain be alcoholic beverages will increase right. mom supply. <laughs> right. Research does not back that up. Yeah. If anything, the research indicates that supply is slightly dropped, mm -hmm. possibly because of the change in flavor of mm. the breast milk. Um, so it's not a permanent drop. I think but everyone tries to go for that brewer's yeast. Yes. In yes. the beer. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, th they think yeah. brewer's yeast in the beer. Oh, mm -hmm. great. The beer. Now, there is some benefit mm -hmm. in being relaxed because that can help mm -hmm. That can help ease a letdown mm -hmm. um, and the ejection of milk. But too much alcohol can actually impair mm -hmm. that milk ejection reflex. I can so there's less milk coming out. If you're 
dehydrated yes. from alcohol. Yes. Right. Dehydration from alcohol That's consumption okay. can absolutely mess with yeah. your supply. Again, temporarily. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something where, oh no, you're going to have no supply because mm -hmm. you had a couple drinks yeah. while on vacation. Mm -hmm. But you know, just stay hydrated, be responsible. The traveling with breast milk too, I've heard women who pump when they're traveling, they take those ice packs that you can just break. Yes. Like right. the reusable ones. And they just keep a few in the bag and then when they need them, just break they them and put them in the cooler. Right. right. Yeah. That's like some so easy. Yes. To keep it so easy. And there also the research that I've been reading says that as long as there are still ice crystals mm -hmm. present in the breast right. milk, yes. it is considered frozen. Mm -hmm. yep. Even if some of it has thawed, mm -hmm. as long as there are ice crystals still present in the breast milk, it is still considered to be frozen. Right. Yep. Well, I have a question about Sure. Not exactly the drinking thing, mm -hmm. but the brewery's beer cheese. Mm -hmm. What if you just take the brewery's cheese as a supplement? Does that increase the breast milk? Brewer's yeast as a supplement is commonly used. Mm -hmm. um, the research that has been done, clinical research that has been done, does not show that it has an across-the-board positive mm -hmm. effect on supply. It doesn't have a negative effect on supply, but because people's body chemistry mm -hmm. differs from person to person. Um, all of these different supplements, fenugreek, brewer's yeast, even malungai, um, they all, and some of the other ones, they all do have an effect in some people, but they do not have a uniform effect across mm -hmm. everybody who takes them. I always explain it like with medications. Like everyone's body reacts differently Correct. to medications. One person who takes a blood pressure med, it could bring their blood pressure down to a healthy level and they're totally fine. Another person, same body type, same height, same weight, that takes that same med, same dosage, it could drop them so low that now they're hypotensive. Right. Exactly. It's just because everybody's body processes it differently and reacts differently to it. So one thing that works for one person doesn't always work for another. Even the teas, like the mother's milk tea, right. really great for some women. Really great. And then others, they could drink five cups a day and have no effect. Right. That's right. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. so I always go back when a lot of moms ask me about the galactagogues, which are any kind of substance that would increase your milk supply, like oatmeal is a common one. Um, I always go back to just the basics. Skin to skin contact, mm -hmm. nurse right. as frequently as possible, mm -hmm. put the baby on the breast as often as possible because all that stimulation is going to, mm -hmm. you know, increase the milk supply mm -hmm. and let down and everything like that. But literally, just back to basics. Right. And rest. Yes. Rest. Reducing rest stress. Hydration. Yes. And rest Reducing and stress. Hydration. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But what about older children? <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, yeah. it's the same. The more you remove milk, Mm -hmm. from the breast, the more it signals the breast right. to create more milk. It's all supply and demand. So the okay. more breast milk that you produce, the more your body's going to be making. Yep. And that was one of the questions that I had. Um, I had a, um, a, one of the moms that I was speaking to, mm -hmm. she just had a, a baby and the baby was in the NICU. Mm -hmm. So um, she was concerned about breast milk supply mm -hmm. and she had to have milk ready for the nurses in the NICU to give her baby. So she was concerned about that, and I said, well, one thing is that you just, you know, you initially you just every three hours at least put the pump on you when you're not mm -hmm. with the baby to keep going, you know, keep that going, and even if there's nothing coming out, mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes afterwards, just pump so that you have enough. Her concern was not having enough in the NICU for the yeah. nurses, so then they would end up giving formula, but she, by doing this, within two days, her milk supply was quite good. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And she yeah, had that's the, the thing colostrum. too. Even if you don't notice anything at first, or even the first few days, right? Your you're body, your baby, yeah, your it's, body. It's you're telling yeah. your body to produce it, so it's eventually mm -hmm. going to produce it. Right. It's just not going to be right. that every second. What did I get there? Exactly. <laughs> and then you know, they also all babies have that three six rule: three weeks, mm -hmm. six months, three weeks, six weeks, three months, six months. They mm -hmm. will have a growth spurt, whereby they're going to be on mm -hmm. the breast constantly, and moms mm -hmm. think that they just don't have enough milk just telling your body to produce enough for them, yes. which is a wonderful thing. So. Although with that, babies don't read calendars. <laughs> <laughs> babies don't read calendars. <laughs> so, so it could be two and a half weeks, it could be four weeks. <laughs> yes, watch the baby, not the clock. Right. <laughs>
Kissing is weeping. That's <laughs> yes, 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, that same mom was also concerned about how to know that the baby was getting enough. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, you know, the first few days of life, it's, you know, for save life, it should be one diaper. Mm -hmm. Second day, two diapers, up until you get to the sixth day. And then mm -hmm. six to eight wet diapers, you know, one to two, two to three poopy diapers per day. Mm -hmm. Bright yellow is perfect. Yeah. So we just have, you know, just keep doing that. And any questions, you can call us. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, you know what? I actually had, I was speaking with a mom recently who um, was concerned about weight gain. And her mm -hmm. son is a little bit older, I believe, around seven or eight months. Right. Um, but she was starting to transition to solids mm. and was kind of being told, like, the three meals a day type right. of thing. And her child really wasn't doing that. And she was just home. She was a teacher, so now she was home um, for the summer. And she's like, he was there all the time. And I'm like, he's, you know, increasing your supply and he probably wants to nurse because you're there. But I was like, you know, we were talking about the two different growth charts. And we found out that um, the app in her phone that she was tracking the weights on defaulted to the CDC growth oh, chart. Oh, okay. And when she switched it to the WHO growth chart, her he baby was, was now in the 50th right. percentile. 50th right. percentile once that switched. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing. amazing, you know, yeah. using the WHO growth chart for breastfed babies, it looks at breastfed babies uh, globally, whereas the CDC right. chart just focuses on breastfed and formula-fed babies in the U.S. Right. So right. breastfed babies grow at a different rate than formula-fed yeah. babies. So if you try to put a, a strictly breastfed baby onto the CDC chart, they're not going to be where they're supposed right. to be. But right. if you put them on the WHO chart, they're perfect. They're usually golden. Right. And what's <laughs> interesting is if you go to the CDC website, uh -huh. they tell you to use the hoop chart. Do they? They do. That's amazing. Yeah, that's great. That's at least that they're willing to. Yeah. They at least know. <laughs> yeah. That, they, right, you know. they tell you to use right. the hoop chart. That's amazing. Um, yeah. so. <laughs> as long as the baby's on a steady curve, that's you're right. good. Yeah. That's right. You know. And that's, that's the thing. As long as the baby is following their curve, mm -hmm. right. that's why exactly. there are so many curves on that chart. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what I always talk about, too. Like, try to track your baby's own curve mm -hmm. rather than following mm -hmm. the other curves on it. Because if they're trending upward, they're gaining weight. Right. And as long right. as they're meeting milestones mm -hmm. and they're, you know, I, with age, they're increasing in everything, then it's there not one are specific formula for of a better word for yes. anybody. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Everyone's that's right. different. Yeah. But, yeah. So another question I get frequently is asking about nipple shields. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. This is becoming more common. <laughs> yeah. Nipple I think I've shields. Had a few about that recently too. Yes. And I had a mom who said that she had inverted nipples, okay. and a lactation consultant in the hospital sort of threw a nipple shield at her and told, made her feel bad about not breastfeeding. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Um, so she wanted to mm -hmm. figure out, you know, what was available. She actually found, realized that the nipple shield that had been given to her was the wrong size. So, oh, right. So I was trying to help her mm -hmm. make sure that it was the right, that she mm -hmm. had one that was the right mm -hmm. size, and um, also, you know, try to find out, you know, how much she really needed the nipple shield mm -hmm. because even with inverted nipples, depending mm -hmm. on the degree of inversion, yes. it is still possible to nurse without a nipple and shield. And a truly inverted nipple will not come out with, like if you right. put a pump, if you think you have an inverted nipple and you put a pump on and your nipple gets drawn out, that's not a true mm -hmm. inverted nipple. Right. It does project outwards. That's right. That's right. And that was one of the things I suggested to her mm -hmm. was, try pumping a little mm -hmm. bit, even just with a hand pump, yeah. to see if it came out. She said, oh, yes, it does. Yeah. Right. And I said, well, then, you know, <laughs> if, you know, when you're ready to, yeah. you can start weaning away from mm -hmm. that nipple shield simply mm -hmm. by pumping mm -hmm. for a little bit to draw the nipple right. out mm -hmm. before you try to latch baby on. Yeah. Even an ice cube, as uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. sounds, will do that also. Yeah. I, the, I, the one issue I've had with moms calling about the nipple shield is that they end up with sore nipples mm -hmm. from either a poor latch or, you know, there might yes. possibly be a tongue tie or lip tie, but usually I'm trying to decipher between the two and then get them the, the assistance they need for that, but um, they have people that tell them, well, just use a nipple shield because then your nipples won't be sore anymore. Right. But it's like a band-aid, like it's going to cover up the problem, but it's not going to solve the problem. Right. So and it can cause always, other problems. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Uh, so trying to decipher why they're having the pain and mm -hmm. the soreness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. usually it's usually it's been a latch issue, and sometimes it's you know I've 
walk them through doing that flipple technique mm -hmm. to get the breast mm -hmm. into the mouth, and then that seems to help. So it's just trying to figure out how to get the latch right mm -hmm. to decrease the pain. We need we need we need to be able to see everybody and help them all. Exactly. <laughs> this might be the way. Yes. Yeah, maybe this is the way. So if you like this, even if you're tuning in after we finish this, please let us know that you like this. Mm -hmm. And if we get positive feedback, we'll keep doing this. Yeah, definitely. And we we could even with doing it this way, we could do more than just two a month. Absolutely. Because right. this we could even do from home. We could right. Have, Mm -hmm. You know, we could do the group meetings, but then have maybe one person every week kind of tune in. And if people are actually going to come, maybe we can do an invite and see if people actually come yeah. mm -hmm. and right. attend the online one because then people can ask, ask questions and we can That's answer. Right. That's right. So, yeah. This is fun. <laughs> A new experience. Yeah. <laughs> have you had any other questions recently? Um. I'm trying to think I have, and actually a lot of them have been via text message. So oh, I have yes, to look at my phone yes, because yes. I can't remember offhand. Yeah. But it's several back and forths with a couple mm -hmm. moms in particular. Mm -hmm, yeah. So um, I'm trying to, I actually would have to look at my phone. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. I will be back. I can, I I can think of another one I if we need another one while we're waiting. Um, Go for it. Some moms ask me the ones who smoke. Mm. Okay. Mm. That, that was, and then they're concerned about, you know, smoking because they say when they're in the hospital that the nurses will tell them, well, if they're smoking, they can't breastfeed. And, yeah, or, or, you know, the nicotine thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, certainly the nicotine does pass through the milk, mm -hmm. but it also can cling to clothing. It's in the air. There's secondhand smoke. But the ben from all of the research that I've read, the benefits of breastfeeding mm -hmm. outweigh the negatives of breastfeeding while smoking. Mm -hmm. I mean, try to minimize as much as you can the exposure of the baby to the nicotine and the other, and it's not even just the nicotine, it's the other chemicals that mm -hmm. are involved mm -hmm. in the production mm -hmm. of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, there's formaldehyde and all sorts of other things that nobody really wants to mm -hmm. <laughs> have yeah. in their body yeah. um, when they think about it. Um, but you know, smoking is a hard thing to yeah. stop doing, <laughs> and there there are lots of support groups out there for that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, so I would I would say to any mom who's smoking and wants to breastfeed, mm -hmm. breastfeed. Yeah. Try, get the support you need to try to stop smoking, mm -hmm. but in the meantime, keep breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. You know. If you have to, go outside mm -hmm. um, in the fresh air so mm -hmm. that it's not coming in. Change mm -hmm. your clothing before mm -hmm. breastfeeding your baby. Mm -hmm. Try to limit yourself, but keep breastfeeding because mm -hmm. the benefits of that outweigh mm -hmm. any harm. So the one mom, I was, I'm just looking back at some of the things that she's been saying, and actually both of these two moms that I've been speaking with, one of the big things mm -hmm. with newborns, which is common, as you know, is the baby falling asleep at the breast. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the, the big, the one major advice that I always give that seems to work well is using breast compression. Mm -hmm. So when the baby falls asleep, which they inevitably will, mm -hmm. and then they're going to wake up, you know, because yeah. the baby's like to sleep. So yeah. it's just getting your hand almost like in the C shape and then putting it kind of far back into the breast and mm -hmm. then compressing as the baby stops sucking. And then you're basically stimulating the, the breast ducts at the back, the um, the milk ducts at the back of the breast, mm -hmm. and that really, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so then you just kind of use your hand, almost like a C-shape, compressing mm -hmm. kind of far back from the nipple, and then as you press down, the baby will start to suck again, mm -hmm. and then as the baby suck stops, you just sort of move your hand around, compressing around. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, the nice thing is the baby's also getting the fatty hind milk, mm -hmm. you know. And then it's the nice thing was a few weeks after that, I, you know, that same mom said to me, "Oh, his um, is this okay? His his uh, poop is really yellow mm -hmm. and very kind of almost seedy." Mm -hmm. I was like, "No, that's wonderful <laughs> because that means he's getting a lot of that, that nice fatty yeah. milk." Yeah. Which yeah. Probably so, yeah. you know, so that was one of those questions. It's a lot of the questions that the new moms have. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful thing to, yeah. to help moms this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can do that any time. They'll text you at you know, in the middle of the night. You're even, you know, if you're awake, you can just text them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. That's great. It's a convenient thing. Well, and another question that I get, um, having 
I'm currently pumping, um, and I pumped full, when I was working full time for eight months with my first. Um, is how do I manage this pumping thing at work, at home? I have multiple kids. You know, how do I manage it? How do I get more milk out for each pumping session? Mm -hmm. And that first compression mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is great for when you are pumping yeah. because it also helps get the milk out. Right. Just having the suction of the pump mm -hmm. isn't always enough. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, one of these days, I will do it. I will run my pump, <laughs> and then I will. Take a picture of that and then run it again with rest compressions to get more out. Yeah. And then I will hand express after that and oh, see how much okay. more I can get out and just nice. see how much. Because I, yeah. I haven't taken pictures of yeah. it, but I know for myself yeah. that you know that makes such a difference. Exactly. And sometimes so, going hand back. Compression. Oh yeah. So I tried hand compression once before I educated on myself. Of what you're actually supposed to do? Mm -hmm. I was doing it totally wrong. And I'm like, why <laughs> am I not getting anything? It was totally wrong. So I yeah, have found a great video since then. But I feel like that's one thing I tell a lot of moms too, because um, the pumping questions that I've gotten recently is with sore nipples. It hurts. Yes. Right. And yeah, it does hurt because you have that strong suction. Right. So one way to do it with the pump is either like lower the right. the setting on it. It will take twice as long. But the suction is not as strong, so it's not going to pull your nipple as badly and hurt as badly. Um, or I've mentioned doing the hand pumps because that is not as strong as the electrical pumps, so it's not as bad. Or good old hand compression. Um, so the the way the video actually teaches you how to do it is you hold your breast in a C shape like this, <laughs> and you push back, you squeeze in, and then release. So you're pushing back on the nipple, squeezing in, and then releasing. And when you do that, that helps the milk to come out. But you're doing that same compression. You're compression, compressing back on the breast, squeezing it in, and then pulling it out. And then the milk will start to flow. And that's another thing, too. If you don't see anything for the first few minutes that you're doing it, you haven't had a letdown yet, but it'll come, and then the milk will start coming out. That's right. But once I learned how to do that, yes. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> well, and there is a link to that hand yes. expression, the hand yes. expression video, mm -hmm. um, Stanford video. Yes, the Stanford video is the one that I give yes. on moms because that one is probably the best one I've seen. Yes, right. that one. There's a link to it yes. on the Lehigh Valley Breastfeeding Coalition's yes. website. Yes. There is a page. Okay. All about hand expression. Yeah, and there's a link to that. And yeah. In there, there's also information on pumping tips. Yeah troubleshooting, problem solving, and just there's even a new section on how to choose a breast pump oh, nice. with a list of different manufacturers, the different styles, explaining the difference of pumps and what they're, what they're best used for. Um, and it also lists, um, you know, if you have a pump, common problems with the pump and how to fix those problems, and links to the manufacturer's website so you can get information from their websites. So I'm going to ask a question, I'm going to jump out short the answer on. Now that insurance covers a lot of the breast pumps, do they have a specified brand that they cover usually, or do they allow you to choose? I don't know the answer. That's a great question. Um, there's actually, I'm going to turn this away a little bit. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, there is some insurance companies try to specify that they cover a particular one. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. By law, mm -hmm. they have they can't refuse to cover okay. a different one. Okay. So you just need to have someone who knows how to submit the paperwork correctly right. okay. to get whichever pump you want. Right. Okay. Because the pump that your insurance company recommends is not always the best pump out exactly. there. Right. And I know some moms who don't react well to a certain pump, if they switch pumps, then yes. they react better to That's it. That's right. right. And some of them just, you know, their settings may be different, they may work differently. Right. And what works for one doesn't always work mm -hmm. for the other. Right. And that's the thing a lot of people don't realize. They think that they have no milk. It's because, mm -hmm. as you know, the prolactin yeah. is what produces the milk. But for mom to be relaxed and mm -hmm. depending what pump she's used right. to when her child's there, it's the oxytocin that actually gets the milk down yes. into the nipple, into the letdown to happen. Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of times the milk is sitting right there, but if you're yeah. anxious, you can't always get yeah. it to flow. So. Right. Yeah.
It's good to know, though. Yeah. Yes, I, I was talking yes. about this, and I'm glad I yes. remembered. And again, on that coalition website, lehighvalleybreastfeeding.org, which has a list of all those health lines that we were talking about and a calendar of all those support groups we were talking about earlier, there's also information on where to get pumps. Um, so there are a number of suppliers locally that people can go to and contact. Different ones work with different insurance companies and different manufacturers. Um, but that information is on there, mm -hmm. so people can find it. So, one of the other questions I get, which goes back to our topic of building a village, mm -hmm. a village of support, is besides breastfeeding support groups, where can you go to hang out with other breastfeeding moms yeah. or other moms in general? Yeah. Um, and there are so many groups in Lehigh Valley, mm -hmm. moms groups in Lehigh Valley, and parent groups in Lehigh Valley, because dads are stay-at-home parents too. Mm -hmm. um, one of my best friends is a full-time working mom, mm -hmm. and her husband is a stay-at-home parent oh, for nice. their now four-year-old. Nice. Um, but he's stayed home from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a couple other friends who have similar situations mm -hmm. where Dad is the stay-at-home parent, mm -hmm. or you know, mom and dad both work, but they take turns staying home. Mm -hmm. um, so there are definitely lots of groups out there, and I would recommend getting out and talking to other moms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, go to a support group and then meet up with other moms who are at the same support group, mm -hmm. um, and ask them where they meet up with people. Um, social media is a great way to find play dates. Mm -hmm. um, and there, locally, there are a number of groups on Facebook um, that are associated with either sh stores that cater to mothers and young children, mm -hmm. um, or that um, there are also Facebook groups that revolve around support groups. But it's not just the people who are in the support group. They also mm -hmm. create play dates outside of the support group meetings. Um, and there's a local, there are two local resources um, that advertise and can be on their email list. You can go to their website to get information on free family activities for families. Um, so those are really great resources that are out there. Um, so even if you're not in the Lehigh Valley and you're looking for a way to build your village, um, I recommend just looking around, talk, start talking to other parents either through social media or in person at groups. Um, if you're pregnant and are worried about what you're going to do yes. when, once you have your child, you know, start talking to the other parents yes. or parents-to-be that are in those childbirth education classes. Even come to a meeting when yeah. you're pregnant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there are yeah. like the perfect time to go. You have no children with you to distract you. That's right. You can, you're all ears, you can listen, and you can learn so much <laughs> before you have the baby. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, but we there's have, so much you can learn. We have two children, children here right now <laughs> knowing that we were going to be Streaming tonight, a few of our children stayed home. Right. Yes. <laughs> Normally, we have quite a few children running around playing. The other thing that's also nice, because I know a lot of moms are concerned, um, you know, those especially if they have parents staying home, mm -hmm. finances are tight. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I, I remember being in that same position mm -hmm. when my children were little. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of free groups out there. They oh, don't yes. necessarily mean you have to pay. That's Even right. local bookstores, mm -hmm. I won't mm -hmm. go into the nature, I'm sure right. you know, they have oh, yeah. like a, a story time there, mm -hmm. or the local library has right. story mm -hmm. time. Um, a lot of these kind of places, sometimes they'll have like a play kind of thing for $2 at a yeah. $2 time, yeah. things like that. So there's right. a lot of these available. Yeah. Just oh, definitely. Kind of Googling, yeah. finding out in your locally what's out mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. And then, like you said, hooking up with other moms, and then yeah. you can share ideas. Yeah. We should probably talk about the LV Milky meeting. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> we have another the the door. program going on. It's a bit here. Oh, I think I see it. Oh, so we have a. No, it's not right there somewhere. Is it a friend? Oh, here it is. Yeah. So we have, and there's also right next to it should be, or right behind it should be a how to enter. Yes. Um, but there is, um, with all the support groups and classes dealing with pregnancy, childbirth, childcare, 
breastfeeding in Lehigh Valley, we have an initiative called LV Milky Meeting. Um, and again, I realize this may be backwards for some of you, mm -hmm. um, but if you go, to, if you go to any of the meetings or classes in Lehigh Valley, and then post about it on social media with the hashtag LV Milky Meeting, um, you can be entered to win um, some prizes. Some of those great prizes mm -hmm. we were talking about. The prize drawing will be at our Lehigh Valley Live Love Latch and Big Latch on Family Celebration on Saturday, August sixth. Um, so post about it, go to a class, go to a support group. Um, you can get one entry for each group or class that you go to and post about. Um, and the details on exactly how to enter um, are also available on the Lehigh Valley Breastfeeding Coalition's blog, which is lvbreastfeeding.blogspot.com. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to update the list of prizes available, yes. um, but we will have that prize drawing, and I believe we actually have a couple local sponsors who have said that they will continue donating prizes so that we can continue doing this every few oh, months. Perfect. We can have a prize drawing every few months. Perfect. So be just because yeah. you miss it this time, keep going to classes and support groups. There are so many of them. I, get, I did a count at the beginning of June. Mm -hmm. There were 34 different classes and support so groups that people people wow. could attend, different meetings that people could attend mm -hmm. in the month of in the months of June and July. That's a lot of entries. That's a lot of entries. <laughs> <laughs> and if you attend our live stream, um, not watching the recorded meet in after, but if you actually attend the live stream, that'll count as you attending a meet. -in. That's right. So we can just add you to our sign-in sheet that we have here, and then you can use our live stream as an entry. That's right. And it's any support group or class yes. in the High Valley that's pregnancy, childbirth, baby care, or breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And we are coming up on 8 o'clock, so if there are any other questions, now the time to ask. I'm going to quick check to see whether we had anybody write in on any of our other sites. Okay. But are there any other questions that people have that you think those out there might want to know? I'm trying to think. Related to our village. If the baby doesn't land in the hospital. Yes. I had a, yeah. If the baby doesn't latch on in the hospital, there are... Each of the hospitals, hope. yes, there's still there's still hope. A friend of mine, her baby did not latch on in the hospital. She pumped um, and supplemented with formula for, I believe it was almost four months, and then she got her baby to latch on. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's an extreme case. There were other issues going on, but yeah. So just because baby does not latch in the hospital, do not give up hope. Um, keep pumping. That's number one. Feed. Well, sorry. Number one is feed the baby. <laughs> number two is keep pumping um, to protect the supply. Um, but again, it's no matter how you get breast milk to your baby, they're still getting benefit from it. Um, and even if they're only getting some of their feeds from breast milk, breast milk, they're still getting benefit. Mm -hmm. So there is no shame in saying, hey, I pump and I supplement with formula. Mm -hmm. You know, you are doing what you can. You are doing what works for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think that's the most important thing. And so pe people get so caught up in the exclusive, and while exclusive breastfeeding is wonderful, mm -hmm. and extended breastfeeding beyond six months, beyond a year, mm -hmm. beyond two years even, mm -hmm is wonderful. It doesn't work for every person out there. Mm -hmm. So just know that if you didn't make it as far as you wanted to, it doesn't mean that you're a failure. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways to care for your baby and mm -hmm. give your baby the best. Mm -hmm. The other thing that also I think is important to add, a lot of times there's so many other issues or stresses in the hospital for whatever reason could have been the way that the birth happened took place or mm -hmm. how the mom's feeling or other things that sometimes it just takes leaving the hospital going home. So continue yeah. to pump. Get into your own routine. Get into a routine. Call one of the La Leche leaders. We'll be happy to 
walking yeah. through ways to try to get your baby to latch on. Mm -hmm. There's some could be some other kind of physiological reason. Sometimes it's as simple as um, the baby may have ended up inadvertently getting a bottle in, mm -hmm. you know, in the nursery, and mm -hmm. it could be nipple confusion. Mm -hmm. So then there, there's ways that we have, you know, within half a day we've mm -hmm. gotten the baby back on the breast, mm -hmm. by, you know, by using a feeding syringe or whatever mm -hmm. other, you know, or the SNS system. So there are um, there's definitely avenues that we can take to try to correct the issue but again you know there are extreme cases where it has worked if you're determined after mm -hmm. an extended time period but don't give up and yeah. call somebody so that we can walk you through it sometimes yes. it's timing mm -hmm. you know it's just getting home your milk supply just has to come in mm -hmm. baby just has to learn to you know to go back on the breast mm -hmm. and learn, you know wait to get the maybe your let, let down wasn't good you know there's mm -hmm. so many things that can be mm -hmm. explored to see if that's mm -hmm. the issue and then you know we can work with that Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Back to the building the village of support. Um, another program that the Breastfeeding Coalition has going on is Baby Friendly Lehigh Valley. I mean, mm -hmm. we've talked about Baby Friendly Hospital mm -hmm. initiative, mm -hmm. where trying to reduce the amount of formula that's offered, trying to reduce nip. Um, Classifiers. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. And artificial <laughs> nipples in the first. Um, few days after birth to encourage breastfeeding, mm -hmm. but there's also we a separate initiative that Baby Friendly Lehigh Valley that's trying to make build a community of support within Lehigh Valley. Mm -hmm. um, businesses are signing on saying that they welcome breastfeeding families in their. Um, business. Um, but it's not just breastfeeding families, it's also anyone with small children, families with any uh, small children, um, have a place to change a diaper, a comfortable mm -hmm. place to sit and pump or feed, whether it's breast or bottle. Um, there's, you know, they have, they may have toys available for kids while parents are shopping. They may have um, a step stool in the bathroom so a young child can reach the sink. Mm -hmm. Um, so things like that, um, and that they really cater to and welcome families with young children. Um, and that can be so important because I remember when I was a new mom and I was trying to run errands, I would purposely, you know, stop at a particular store mm -hmm. that I knew had a changing area uh -huh. because even though I didn't need to shop at that store, just because I knew that I could have a comfortable place to change my baby mm -hmm. and feed my baby. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to have that everywhere, yes. So that parents don't have to feel nervous about going out in public. Mm -hmm. uh, Pennsylvania state law, uh, the Freedom to Breastfeed Act, protects breastfeeding in public. It is not considered indecent exposure. Mm -hmm. Anywhere the mother and child are allowed to be, breastfeeding is allowed to take place, with or without a cover. Mm -hmm. So and. There are similar laws in 49 states in the U.S., Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, a number of other territories and protectors, mm -hmm. <laughs> as well as all federally owned lands. Mm -hmm. So national parks. Mm -hmm. um, you want to go to Congress and breastfeed in the middle yeah. of Congress? You can. It's protected <laughs> by law. Post offices. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, so there are so many places where it is already protected, um, and people don't realize that. So it's you know again, it's a comfort thing. You know, some people are more comfortable covering up. Some people are more comfortable not covering up. Some babies are more comfortable, and older babies, even toddlers and older children, are more comfortable not being covered up because who wants to eat with a blanket over their head? <laughs> but just know that the law does protect you in most places. And there we go. And we are just before eight o'clock. Any final word? Hopefully, we can do this next time. Yes, yes. it's been really useful. I'm yes. hoping we have more people yes. tuning in yes. down the road once they know we do this. Yes. And please, if you have questions, if you need help, please contact us. Mm -hmm. um, we are available. Um, our the information. For all of us is at lehighvalleybreastfeeding.org as well as the La Leche League of Eastern Pennsylvania.org website. And it's on our Facebook page yes. of Lehigh County. And you can contact the La Leche League of Bethlehem on their Facebook page, the La Leche League of Bethlehem. Yes. Um, so we are out there. We are here to help. Um, and we want to hear from you.
Mm-hmm. Have a good night.